Loneliness and depression can make you feel like you're trapped in a dark cave, isolated from the world. The cold emptiness and heaviness seem like they might go on forever. But the ancient philosophy of Stoicism contains rays of light to illuminate the way out. Come join us in today's video as we uncover the secret Stoic wisdom passed down by the great Stoic philosophers in the art of dealing with loneliness. Thank you all for watching, and may you find clarity and peace from the Stoic ways. Number 1. Recognize that loneliness is a universal human experience. The Stoic philosophers of ancient Greece and Rome deeply understood that loneliness springs forth for all of us at times. Even Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and one of the most influential Stoic thinkers frequently wrote of recurring feelings of loneliness and isolation, despite being one of the most powerful men in the world. The Stoics teach us that it's vital to recognize that loneliness does not mean something is flawed within you, nor does it signify that you are unlovable or destined to always be alone. It is simply an inner signal, highlighting our profound human need for connection and meaning. In those moments, take a breath and remember that you are not alone in your struggles. Far from it. You stand in good company alongside the giants of history in experiencing loneliness from time to time. This stoic perspective allows us to respond to loneliness with greater wisdom, self-compassion and determination to seek out community where we can find it. Whether that stems from meaningful conversation with friends or family, attending gatherings where we can find a sense of belonging or simply interacting with strangers on our daily commute with more presence and humanity. The Stoics provide a timeless reminder that by recognizing the universality of loneliness, we can break through it and reconnect to the world around us, often emerging wiser and more appreciative of each moment we are given with other human beings. Simple Stoic awareness provides solace and a path to overcoming solitude. Number two, reach out to friends and family members. It's understandable when feeling lonely or depressed to want to retreat inward and isolate even more. But the Stoics would urge us to fight this impulse. Instead, make the effort to be socially engaged with friends and family, which can dramatically help shift our perspective and mood. Seneca and other Roman Stoics wrote often about how even just one genuine heartfelt conversation with a trusted confidant can pull us out of the depths of melancholy. So pick up the phone and call that old friend you've been meaning to catch up with for months. Message the cousin whose upbeat energy always seems to lift your spirits. Or surprise that colleague who always makes you laugh with an invitation for happy hour drinks. Now of course this may feel uncomfortable or even burdensome, when you're already feeling self-conscious and low. But push past that initial barrier, and you're likely to find much-needed comfort and joy in the company of people who care for you. The Stoics also recommend not placing unrealistic expectations on any one interaction or person when reaching out for company. The goal is simply to reconnect sincerely to community and to appreciate the gift of companionship where you can find it. Some conversations may lead to deeper rapport. Others may fizzle quickly, and that's okay. By regularly sprinkling small social interactions throughout your week, you'll steadily chip away at feelings of loneliness from every angle. So reach out to whoever comes to mind that you genuinely enjoy. Make plans to meet in person when possible or even just connect over a phone or video call. Deliberately staying engaged with your wider social circle gives loneliness far less room to fester and allows you to realize that you needn't shoulder the weight alone. Number three, join clubs, organizations, or community groups. Marcus Aurelius himself advised his followers that actively seeking out community centered around our values and interests can be tremendously uplifting. So what types of groups should we consider joining when struggling with loneliness from a stoic perspective? While the opportunities around us are endless, consider a weekly philosophy club where you can find open-minded people also looking to make sense of life's complex questions and gain wisdom. Attend meetups for language learners if exploring new cultures excites you, or join the local animal rescue organization if surrounding yourself with our furry companions fills your heart. Even just an evening cooking class filled with strangers fosters natural community building while learning a practical new skill. 
and the Stoics would certainly endorse any volunteer organization, such as Habitat for Humanity or Meals on Wheels, focused on actively using your time and hands to serve a cause bigger than yourself. What better medicine for melancholy than uplifting someone else? The options for meeting people aligned with your values are infinite in the age of the internet. Search sites like Meetup and Facebook for groups relevant to your area. And don't overthink it. The goal is simply to surround yourself with positive community energy by engaging in activities resonating with your soul. Inner loneliness recedes rather quickly when actively engaging with outer circles glowing with that rare gem of human connection. By joining clubs or causes resonating with your authentic self, you plant the seeds for kindred spirits to blossom in your life when you need them most. Number four, take care of your health. The Stoics were famous for integrating mind, body, and soul in their worldview, and they frequently wrote of the link between lacking vigor physically and struggling emotionally. When we feel our strongest in body, our inner fortitude rises to meet any external hardship, social or otherwise. So closely examine whether your current lifestyle habits may be contributing to feelings of loneliness or melancholy. Are you eating nutritious whole foods high in vitamins and nutrients? Or is your diet laden with heavily processed ingredients providing only empty calories? The Stoics would certainly endorse adopting a Mediterranean-style diet with emphasis on fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds to nourish both body and spirit. What about exercise? Are you actively moving your body at least 30 minutes most days with activities you enjoy? Participating in dance, cycling, running, and resistance training undoubtedly releases feel-good endorphins while building confidence. And the Stoics would remind us to approach fitness from a perspective of delight rather than dread. Find what feels good for your body. Finally, prioritize truly resting and rejuvenating with seven to nine hours of sleep per night minimum. Turn off screens well before bed, limit caffeine late in the day, and develop a soothing pre-bed routine to allow the body to properly unwind. Proper sleep gives us the fuel and clarity needed to nurture our relationships and serve others rather than quickly sliding into isolation. When we demonstrate self-love through proper nutrition, movement, and rest, self-confidence inevitably emerges. From this place of inner harmony, forging and maintaining soul-nourishing bonds only multiplies. Before turning outward for solutions to loneliness, pause and reflect upon your daily lifestyle habits. There you may find the lasting motivation to both care more for self and share more vibrant energy with friends new and old without burning out. Number five, embrace solitude. Consider utilizing lonely periods to reconnect with activities you find mentally and spiritually enriching. For example, mindfulness techniques like meditation, yoga, journaling, and walking in nature allow us to release toxic thoughts and return to the now moment. The stillness and quiet can actually spur profound insights about who we are at our core versus the masks we wear superficially. Immersing yourself in treasured hobbies also shifts energy in a positive direction. Play that musical instrument gathering dust, lose yourself in a photography project documenting your community, read those thought-provoking novels still sitting on your shelf, or tend to a garden overflowing with life. Counterbalancing loneliness with activities which spark inspiration bears fruit. Finally, you may find comfort in the fact that many famous philosophers, writers, and creators often sought out extended isolation throughout history, specifically to recharge their creativity, clarity, and motivation to keep pursuing their life's work. Darwin, Thoreau, Maya Angelou, and countless others produced some of their most impactful contributions to the world in periods of solitude we may be tempted to view only as destructive. The Stoics would challenge us to reframe aloneness, not as a curse, but as a powerful reminder to reconnect with our inner fire and passions. We tapping into long neglected or forgotten projects and pastimes that align with our soul's purpose and surface from periods apart with boosted energy and insight to then share boldly with those communities where we feel seen, heard, and supported. Embrace solitude as the pause that refreshes. Number six. Be kind and helpful to others. A mantra etched into Stoic texts reads, 
What we give, we receive back tenfold. When struggling with melancholy or detachment, shift focus to brightening someone else's day. Open the door for a stranger overloaded with packages. Compliment the barista on their friendliness. Ask colleagues how you can lighten their workload or volunteer at a shelter just to listen and uplift those in hard times. Even the simplest acts of unexpected warmth and care have a scientifically proven ability to release feel-good neurotransmitters in both the giver and receiver while strengthening social bonds. And the Stoics certainly recognized the healing power of selfless service millennia before. Science corroborated it. Marcus Aurelius wrote, Our acts of kindness vanish into the infinite, yet they leave indelible prints in the lives we touch and surely brighten our own path as well. So challenge yourself to complete five small acts of kindness daily. Note how much lighter you feel after putting good into the world, no matter how insignificant the gesture. Observe if strangers begin reflecting warmth back to you more readily after exuding generosity without expecting anything in return. Monitor whether coworkers, neighbors, or even family relate to you differently as compassion becomes your default rather than isolation or indifference. The impact compounds rapidly and may surprise you, but at minimum, by consciously channeling your attention to selfless behaviors, benefiting friends or strangers, your inner light shines through shadows of self-doubt, and you build social capital allowing someone else to lean on your shoulder when times get hard for them. What we give, we receive back tenfold. Be kind. Spread warmth. Discover just how much your lone amber Fan at a light daily can ignite a bonfire dispelling isolation for all fortunate enough to feel its glow. Number 7. Adopt a pet. Marcus Aurelius himself was an avid attendant of animal battles in the Roman Colosseum, and certainly would have understood the profound emotional and social support animal companionship provides when struggling with melancholy or detachment from community. Consider adopting a furry friend from a local shelter or rescue organization. Canine and feline adoption numbers have actually risen dramatically during peak COVID quarantine periods, and social science backs up why. Stroking a purring cat or joyful dog lowers cortisol and blood pressure almost instantly. Unlike fickle humans, a loyal pet provides complete constancy in showering you with unconditional affection. They model resilience climbing out of past traumas and only live in and relish each passing moment with enthusiasm, no matter how small or mundane. Having a pet to care for also guarantees reliable structure in your daily routine, from feeding times to walk schedules to grooming and play sessions. Caring for another living being's needs also elevates purpose and self-worth which recede amidst loneliness. And a perennial icebreaker for meeting new potential friends is stopping dog walkers as your pup plays at the park. While pets should never replace building community connections as a long-term life strategy, Adopting an animal who depends on you and returns devotion tenfold undoubtedly tempers the sting of solitude or disconnection tremendously. Consider opening both your home and heart to an orphaned creature brimming with love and appreciation for your companionship as well. The Stoics would surely approve. Number eight, challenge negative thinking. A useful strategy is mentally snapping a thick rubber band on your wrist every time you catch your inner voice propagating toxic untruths about being deficient or unworthy in some way. Let the physical sensation interrupt the downward spiral. If even for a, a useful strategy is mentally snapping a thick rubber band on your wrist every time you catch your inner voice propagating toxic untruths about being deficient or unworthy in some way. Let the physical sensation interrupt the downward spiral, if even for a moment then consciously replace the negative messaging with radically positive truths about your inherent value. Example self-affirmations include, I am worthy of love and belonging, even with my imperfections. Challenges in connecting with others at times speaks to human nature, not personal shortcomings unique to me. Like even the most influential people in history, I too will have periods of profound connection to others and periods of solitude. Both bring opportunity for growth. I have so much inner passion, creativity, and wisdom to share with this world. My voice deserves to be heard. Repeating such messages, even if they ring hollow at first, begins to melt even the thickest ice of self-judgment over time. The Stoics knew that discipline in one's internal narrative drastically impacts external emotional reality. 
Equally consider externalizing negative thought cycles onto paper. The physical act of writing out distressing self-criticisms, then ripping them up or tossing them in the trash can feel enormously liberating. Externalize the inner vultures. Though the practice takes concerted discipline, reprogramming your mental chatter transforms self-perception and gradually cultivates the self-confidence and verve to put yourself out there socially without being crippled by perfectionism or self-judgment. Control your mind and find community eager to know the real you. Number nine, set meaningful goals. The Stoics were absolutists about living life guided by clear purpose and direction rather than meandering aimlessly. In times of emotional hardship or loneliness, they prescribed plunging your energy into pursuing concrete goals aligned with your values. The act of diligently working towards outcomes that resonate at your soul level builds resilience, self-confidence, and a sense of meaning. So examine areas of your life you find yourself frequently ruminating or complaining about rather than taking action to improve. Do you wish you expressed your creative gifts more, but haven't completed writing projects out of fear of judgment? Did you dream of spearheading community service efforts but increasingly isolated yourself from leadership roles doubting your capabilities? The path forward lays through finally taking imperfect action over continuous perfectionistic analysis. Plot an initial goal around your true passion points, however small or seemingly insignificant, that lights you up inside rather than dims your inner spark. Maybe it's publishing one heartfelt poem or volunteering once a month to feed the homeless. Insidiously pursuing small meaningful goals breeds momentum and hunger for more audacious targets over time. But all journeys start with a first step grounded not in others' expectations but your authentic desires. Tune out the inner voice insisting your dreams are unrealistic or unimportant. The only approval required lives inside you. By actively working towards a better future self and world, rather than passively bemoaning current circumstances, your locus of control revolutionizes. Feelings of helplessness and stagnation, ingraining loneliness, loosen their grip considerably. Remind yourself daily through mindfulness practices that even tiny daily progress to light up your corner of this world does not go unnoticed. For in bettering your sphere, you lift the lives of others, and that profound purpose glimmers through the fog of isolation's darkest nights. Number 10. Limit social media use endlessly. Scrolling Instagram or Facebook often breeds envy, anxiety, and profound distortions about how we measure up. So carefully examine if consuming filtered snapshots of acquaintances' manicured lives actually worsens feelings of isolation and disconnection from community. Does it nurture the false perception that everyone except you enjoys perpetual joy and togetherness with friends 24-7, when in reality, all struggle and most also battle loneliness. Try gradually reducing social media use if noticeable dips in mood, self-judgment or isolation surface after logging off. Begin by deleting mobile apps forcing you to form new access habits via laptop only. Then schedule concrete daily time limits for browsing. When urges strike, consciously redirect attention to activities that uplift and center you like exercise, engaging projects or real conversations. Over weeks, consciously examine if lessened exposure relieves anxiety around comparing lives unfairly. If you gain presence to nurture real-world social bonds falling to the wayside. As connectivity improves, continue moderating use toward intentional rather than addictive usage focused only on adding value. This is not to say quitting social media completely is necessary or advisable for everyone. Benefits like event planning, shared interests, and maintaining long-distance relationships abound. But excessive reliance often cultivates the illusion of friendships while breeding, discontent, and starving, meaningful interaction. Create balance by funneling energy into reciprocal real-world relationships instead of one-way voyeurism. The genuine feelings of being seen, heard, and appreciated missing from social media bloom exponentially when you tend constantly to life's garden rather than seeking superficial validation through the looking glass. Retrain social media to support your highest self rather than substitute for it. If you are listening to this, thank you for staying till the end. If you feel any of these stoic lessons resonated with you today, feel free to start a stoic discussion in the comments. 
I welcome Stoic discussions as they are what the great Stoics like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca advised for. As we stated before, if you're interested in Stoicism and self-improvement through the great Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, then our Stoic newsletter, which you can join in the description, is perfect for you. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, and if you want more content like this, subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope you find peace and serenity in the Stoic ways.